Good afternoon, everybody. Nice to see so many of you again on this lovely sunny day. I hope you're all keeping fit and well and looking after yourselves. I'm really delighted this afternoon to welcome Ruth Waxman. Uh, many of you have been to our meetings and heard her husband, Philip, give a couple of talks uh, on the Jewish Museum. Uh, but now it's his wife's turn this afternoon and uh, we've written out to you uh, to tell you exactly what Ruth is talking about. But just to recap, she's talking about the life of Octavia Hill after having visited where she lived. Ruth will be talking to us about Octavia, who is also known as the Florence Nightingale of Victoria Housing. She was a founder member of the National Trust and Ruth will be taking us about her early life and influences a contribution to society and her legacy. So Ruth, over to you. Hey, well, hello everybody. I'm going to share the screen and hopefully you'll be able to see the PowerPoint presentation. All right, so as Stuart said, my uh, talk is about Octavia Hill and thank you all for zooming in. I hope you find this interesting. Octavia Hill was an English social reformer. She was born in 1838 and died in 1912. When I first looked into her life, I was unaware of just how influential Octavia Hill was. I'm not sure how many of you have heard about her, but obviously I can't see everybody on the screen to find out whether you have or not. I'll be telling you about Octavia Hill's early life and influences, her contribution to society and her and as a role model and her legacy. So who was Octavia Hill? She was a public figure, artist and activist. She was a key figure in the foundation of the National Trust and the founder member of the Charity Organisation Society, now the Charity Family Action. She was also known as the Florence Nightingale of Victoria Housing. And she built improved housing and by her determination, personality and skills transformed poverty stricken houses in a few London streets into tolerable and harmonious communities. Communal facilities such as meeting halls, saving clubs and drama productions were established which enhanced the lives of the tenants. She is seen as a founder of modern social casework. By placing articles about her work in influential magazines, Octavia drew attention to the appalling conditions of the times and her method of improving the quality of life of those she was responsible for. These articles, later published as Hose for the London Poor, attracted influential patrons, including Queen Victoria's second daughter, Princess Alice. Princess Alice translated the book into German and incognito visited Barrett's Court, one of the London streets. Octavia Hill also campaigned to give ordinary people access to the countryside. She believed in the life enhancing virtues of pure earth, clean air and blue sky. Her Larksfield home in Kent became the base for campaigns to save nearby open spaces and both local and national footpaths from being from building development. She was the first person to use the term green belt for London. Sorry about the pictures on the side, but I'm not sure how to adjust these slides. <clears throat> so she was born in Wisbeach, Cambridgeshire, into a family with a strong commitment to alleviating poverty. She was the eighth daughter of James Hill, a prosperous corn merchant and former banker. James Hill, her father, had been widowed twice and sought out a governess for his children. He had been greatly impressed by the writings on education by Caroline Southwood Smith, who came from a family with humanitarian interests. In 1832, Octavia's father hired Caroline as a governess, and in 1835, she became James Hill's third wife. Octavia was born three years later and was the third daughter of James Hill and Caroline Southwood Smith. Octavia's father built an infant school which was run by Octavia's mother, Caroline. A 
according to Octavia, her mother was the first Englishwoman to teach using the methods of Johann Pestalozzi. The school was open in the evenings as a community centre for adult education and recreation. It is now part of the Wisbeach Angles Theatre, staging productions for local people to take part in or enjoy as spectators. By 1840, James Hill was bankrupt. He later suffered a nervous breakdown and virtually disappeared from Octavia's life. The family left Wisbeach and Caroline brought up her children alone in Finchley. Octavia learned her lifelong love of the countryside from these childhood days. In 1851, the family were living in Brownswell cottages, which were on Finchley High Road, just south of where the North Circular now crosses. The properties were demolished in the 1960s. All of Octavia's reform work can be seen as a continuation of her parents' efforts. Her own methods were neither confrontational nor financially reckless. Octavia's sorry, maternal grandfather, Dr. Thomas Southwood Smith, was a great influence. He was a physician to mankind and a tireless campaigner for decent living conditions for poor people. Octavia's mother had to turn to him for financial support and he was, in many respects, a surrogate father to Octavia. He was a friend of John Bentham, who was an English philosopher and political radical, primarily known today for his moral philosophy, especially his principle of utilitarianism, which evaluates actions based upon their consequences. And from the top row, right to left, we have Thomas Southwood Smith, Octavia's grandfather, and he was an English physician and sanitary reformer. Next to him is John Ruskin, who gave Octavia financial aid for her projects. He was a leading English art critic of the Victorian era, as well as an art patron, draftsman, watercolorist, a prominent social thinker and a philanthropist. In 1864, Octavia persuaded John Ruskin to purchase houses in Paradise Place and he gave them to Octavia Hill to manage. The aim was to make lives noble, homes happy and family life good in this one of the most notorious London slums known as Little Hell. On the bottom row we have from left to right F.D. Morris. He was a major theologian of the Church of England, a prolific author and one of the founders of Christian Socialism. Henry Mayhew, author of London Labour and the London Poor, was an English social researcher, journalist, playwright and advocate of reform. He was one of the co-founders of the satirical and humorous magazine Punch in 1841. Octavia was horrified by the grim urban poverty in London. She was concerned about the welfare of the inhabitants of cities, especially London. She was a strong force behind the development of social housing and was significant in the history of social work because she rejected charitable arms. Her intention was to provide help without arms, arguing that charity tended to be resented and served to keep the people on the margins of poverty. She believed in self-reliance and made it a key part that she and her assistants knew their tenants personally and encouraged them to better themselves. She was opposed to municipal housing which she believed to be bureaucratic and impersonal. Octavia's mother Caroline managed the Ladies Guild which was a cooperative enterprise designed to empower women by giving them economic independence. The next title is about the protection of open spaces. Octavia fought to save recreational open spaces that were being devoured by the expanding metropolis of London. Her concern was that her tenants and all urban workers should have access to open spaces. She campaigned against the development of on existing suburban woodlands and amongst her most outstanding successes are the creation of Vauxhall Park and Brockwell Park, 
campaigns for Queenswood in Highgate, Parliament Hill Fields, West Wickham Common, Archbishop's Park and Hillyfields Lewisham. She publicised her campaigns in newspaper articles such as Space for the People and More Air for London. She frequently worked with the Commons and Footpaths Preservation Society, now the Open Spaces Society, whose lawyer, Robert Hunter, became an invaluable ally and one of the co-founders of the National Trust. Right. Wiccan Fen in Cambridgeshire was one of, is one of Britain's oldest nature reserves and was the first reserve cared for by the National Trust. In 1901, the first parcel of land for the reserve was donated to the National Trust by Charles Rothschild, the son of Nathan Rothschild, first Baron Rothschild. And Octavia Hill also helped to save Hampstead Heath and Parliament Hill Fields from being built on. Right. Octavia Hill, along with Robert Hunter and Hardwick Drummond Rawnsley, was one of the three founders of the National Trust. They agreed to set up a national body to acquire vulnerable properties and preserve them for the nation. In 1885, Octavia Hill, Robert Hunter and Hardwick Walmsley worked together to raise public awareness for the railway developments threatening the Lake District. This led to the foundation of the National Trust for the preservation of historic buildings and natural beauty to hold land and buildings in perpetuity forever for everyone. Hunter was the founding chairman of the Trust Executive Board and he suggested the title which is generally known as the National Trust. The National Trust was founded on the 12th of January 1895. Robert Hunter was interested in conservation of public open spaces. After acting as advisor to Octavia Hill in her campaigns to save Hampstead Heath and other open spaces, he worked with Rawnsley to save land in the Lake District from industrial development. Ardwick Drummond Rawnsley was a Church of England canon, poet, hymn writer, local politician and conservationist. Living in the Lake District for more than 30 years, he worked for the protection of the countryside and secured the support of influential people for his campaigns. John Ruskin also lived in the Lake District. There are some significant places saved by Octavia Hill. All right, we have Alfriston Clergy House is a medieval wheeled and timber framed hall house in Polegate, East Sussex. It was the first building acquired by the National Trust. Long Crendon Court House is in Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire and was the second building acquired by the National Trust. Octavia observed it was a blessing to get these lovely old buildings into the hands of the National Trust. Toys Hill is in Brasted, Chark, Kent and Octavia lived nearby in Crockham Hill and wanted to preserve the area for others to enjoy. Her remains are buried in the churchyard of the village church according to her wishes. Talk about Octavia Hill as an artist, writer and teacher. In 1854, John Ruskin visited the Ladies Guild where Octavia Hill was the young manager. He was already celebrated as the author of Modern Painters, originally written in defence of the controversial artist Turner. From 1855 to 1865, Ruskin trained Octavia as an artist to copy original works of art. One such painting is Bellini's masterful The Doge Leonardo Loredan, of 1501. The original is now in the National Gallery. Octavia's copy is on display in the Ruskin Gallery in Sheffield. As already mentioned, Octavia Hill placed articles about her work in influential magazines. She saw her whole life as a teacher and, and uh, sorry, Octavia Hill saw her whole life as an exercise on learning and teaching. She taught in the family private school at the Woking Men's College and in later life campaigned via public speeches 
lectures and articles whilst training her volunteers in housing management. The story continues. A method spread to several other countries, including Holland, Ireland and the USA. The Octavia Hill Association story begins in 1896. Philadelphia was a booming industrial centre with all the problems of the progress and problems of the world's largest cities. Urban chaos grew and so did the number of inadequate overcrowded buildings. The poor were crammed into crudely constructed shacks and one-room apartments. Defective drainage, offensive privies and inadequate water supplies made living in these slums unsanitary and in many cases unbearable. A group of determined Philadelphia women crossed the Atlantic to study under Octavia Hill. They were inspired by her success in London and appalled by Philadelphia's housing conditions. The Octavia Hill Association and its small group of investors provided clean, sanitary and safe living. The group purchased neglected row houses, improved them and rented them to people they thought could best maintain the houses. At the same time, they made a small profit, coining the phrase philanthropy and 4%. The Octavia housing still continues to provide homes for thousands of people in inner city London. She really was a pioneer of housing management as we know it today and believed strongly that good housing was the foundation for a better life. Eventually, ownership of some of the properties where Octavia had first tried and tested her management methods were vested in the Horace Street Trust. This became a model for subsequent housing associations, becoming today's Octavia Housing and Care. In 1907, Parliament passed the first National Trust Act, which defined the National Trust purpose and gave the Trust unique powers to protect property forever for the benefit of the nation. Recently, Octavia Hill's holistic views and her role as, pioneering, as a pioneering woman have attracted widespread admiration. She contributed to the development of occupational therapy in England, saying, occupational therapy enables people to achieve health well-being and life satisfaction through participation in occupation. By 1912, her attitudes and ideals seemed old-fashioned. Her belief that private enterprise was preferable to government action was challenged by an emerging welfare state. She refused to acknowledge that significant government intervention might be needed to deal with the major social problems such as poverty, housing and unemployment. She was of the firm opinion that government initiatives should never replace voluntary action and so her popularity eroded. However, there's a plaque in Red Crossway in South London which reads Octavia Hill, social reformer, established this garden, hall and cottages and pioneered army cadets 1887 to 1890. Octavia Hill formed the first independent cadet battalion in London in 1889, known as the Southwark Cadet Company, a concept which rapidly spread becoming the army cadets. She felt strongly that the military context would socialize urban youths struggling for direction. Octavia Hill wrote, there is no organisation which I have found that influences the boys so powerfully for good as that of our cadets. And if such ideals can be brought before the young lad, before he gets in with a gang of loafers, it may make all the difference to his life. The gardens were originally laid out by Octavia Hill in 1887. The plaque in Westminster Abbey was unveiled in the centre part of the nave on the 22nd of October 2012 by Simon Jenkins, Chairman of the National Trust. It states, social reformer and a founder of the National Trust. The Rosebed. In 1995, 
to mark the centenary of the National Trust, a new variety of rose, Octavia Hill, was named in her honour. It was planted by the Octavia Hill and the Finchley Societies to mark the centenary year of the National Trust and also Octavia's childhood in Finchley. The memorial can be seen in the grounds of Stevens House Finchley, which is off East End Road. There are other commemorations to Octavia Hill, and these include a monument to her on the summit of Hyden Ball in Surrey, one of the National Trust's earliest acquisitions. Shortly after her death, the family erected a stone seat there from which walkers can enjoy views over the Surrey countryside. In 1992, the Family Hill Society, sorry, the, the Octavia Hill Society was set up to promote awareness of the ideas and the deals of Octav Octavia Hill, her family, fellow workers, and their relevance in today's society, nationally and internationally. Under the society's auspices, her birthplace at Wisbeach is now the Octavia Hill Birthplace Museum. So that's my talk. I hope you found it interesting and if you've got any questions I'll try and answer them. Okay, um, Rabbi Nick are you there? Just to guide us through how we can get some questions. Hang on. Right, okay, I can see a number of you in view. If anybody would like to put their hand up to ask any questions, we'll try and get to those or unmute yourselves. Yes. Okay. Hi, hi, Ruth. Thank you very much for a most most interesting talk. Um, just for people's information, just south of Church Street Market in Marylebone, um, there are three roads. I think the middle one, Ranston Street, still has all the original Octavia Hill houses from the Octavia Hill Association. I believe that it's um, protected, uh, but it's uh, many years since I was last there. But if anybody is ever in that area, do go and have a look at that street and it gives you a very good idea of um, the artisanal houses that Octavia Hill pioneered in the middle of some of the worst slums of Marylebone, uh, some of which are now Des Res in the uh, side streets of it. Okay. Thank, Thank you, John. Thanks, there are some good uh, videos that you can get on YouTube and other mediums on the uh, internet if you want to have a look at them. Okay, anybody else? No? Can't see anybody else putting their hands up or... No? Okay. Jasmine here. Can I just say something? Okay, Joy, we've got you Can as you well. Can you hear me? Go yes, go on, carry on. Carry Jasmine, on. thank you so much. That was, I'm carrying on. Um, that was so interesting. We take Hampstead Heath, I thought was always there. It never occurred to me that Hampstead Heath and, and um, Primrose Hill would have been, um, or Parliament Hill Fields rather, would have been um, built on. So. Um, and I know people that live in the Hampstead Heath area and walk over Hampstead Heath now every single day. So thank you, Octavia Hill. And thank you for a very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you. Joy, did you want to come in? Yes, I, I did. Thank you very much. That was interesting. I just wondered if there's a, something about her personal life. Um, was it ever, uh, did she ever marry or have children or was she devoted to her cause? Uh, I couldn't find much about that, I'll be honest. Uh, all I know is she died of cancer. That's the only bit I could find. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I can I just ask a question? Um, Who is that? Um, how did she support herself during this time? Was she um, one of the officers of the uh, uh, organisation she worked for? How, how did it work? Um, again, it doesn't say, but I would suspect uh, probably from her grandfather, who by the sounds of it was quite a wealthy man. And he did support the family, as I mentioned, when they were in a bit of a dire straits when her father left. No, but no. I think from her work, she probably must have got money 
donations probably did come in. Mm, okay. Could I ask okay. a question? Can you go hear on, Angela. me? Angela. Yes, go on, Angela. Um, yes, thank you. What an interesting talk. Thank you very much. I just wanted to ask, I was very interested about the ladies that came from Philadelphia. Did they actually create something there? Because it's a great city now that was similar to what she did in England. Did she manage to actually improve conditions? Well, from the information about the Philadelphia group, it does seem that they did improve a lot of the housing there. And they had this, um, uh, they, they purchased these houses and improved them and rented them to people they thought could best maintain the houses. And they made a small profit which gave them that phrase, philanthropy and 4%. So the uh, Octavia Hill Association I'm, is probably still quite well known in Philadelphia. 